This is going to be another action-packed video today. We will visit several locations in the Cotswolds that are somewhat obscure, but also very interesting and very worth a visit. Starting with the pretty town of Winchcombe, then stopping by Hales Church and the Abbey Ruin, and finally a visit to a Neolithic Long Barrow. All these sites are located in the gorgeous Cotswolds countryside, not far from our flat in Cheltenham. And our next video will be of the fascinating and historic Sudley Castle, which is also nearby. So be sure you are subscribed and have clicked that bell so as not to miss that fun tour. Winchcombe is an ancient Saxon borough with a rich history. It is an extremely picturesque town on the outskirts of Cheltenham that we drove through many times on our Cotswolds outings. I always love Winchcombe's High Street and the view of Cotswold stone buildings adorned with bright flags on one end and the lovely timber-framed Tudor buildings at the other end. Winchcombe is known for its colorful flags, which include vibrant banners representing the Winchcombe Town Badge, Queen Catherine Parr, the Tudor Rose, and St. George's Cross. During Saxon times, Winchcombe was a royal center and in the Middle Ages, it became a pilgrimage center and bustling wool town. In the Victorian era, it expanded with a town hall, additional housing, and churches. St. Peter's Church in Winchcombe was built in the 1450s in the perpendicular style. The impressive 90-foot tower is a prominent landmark in town and can be viewed from miles away, including this lovely perspective from Sudley Castle. There are many buildings of historical significance in a variety of architectural styles around Winchcombe's High Street. I had to film the White Hart because it's one of Britain's most popular pub names, and I also had to video the pub called Plasterer's Arms. And now I have an embarrassing confession. Sometimes I'm a little slow in the heed. I thought for decades that plasterer's arms referred to the appendages that plasterers use when they plaster buildings. But actually, all pubs named arms are referring to a coat of arms. If you go to visit Hales Abbey, I strongly urge you not to overlook the church across the road. The abbey was closed when we visited, so we couldn't go inside and walk around it but thankfully we were able to look inside Hale's church. And with the help of Ian's drone footage, we can also take a wee peek over at the Abbey Ruin as well. Hale's Abbey and church are just outside Winchcombe. In fact, I am in front of the Hale's church right now. This tiny Norman church is actually older than the Abbey. It dates back to 1175 and is fascinating to look around. It receives few visitors, and we found it open and free to walk into. These pre-Reformation box pews are original and the pulpit is from 1606. I was captivated by the lovely 13th century paintings on the walls. The painting on the south wall shows a hunter and dogs chasing a hare who is crouched under a tree. The octagonal 13th century font is noteworthy because it is made of stone with a lead lining. Next to it are tombs from the 1700s. And above, a church bell, which I tried to persuade Ian to ring. But as you can see from the pained expression on his face, he was not comfortable doing that. When I share my video of our visit to Duntisbourne Abbots, you will see that I'm a little more bold when it comes to ringing church bells than Ian is. This tomb is from 1683. Oh, oh there's some stairs up there. Is that like the priest hole? Some of the medieval paintings are better preserved than others. For example, this depiction of St. Catherine is still very clear. Mm -hmm. 
and you can faintly see the painting of St. Margaret on the other side of the chancel. Hale's church looks a very humble church indeed, and actually was a simple church that was used by pilgrims, visitors, and workmen who were not allowed to use the abbey church. This painting in a brickwork pattern features heraldic arms of patrons of the abbey. This small church has no electricity and is still lit by candles. Above this arch window are interesting paintings of medieval beasts, including a basilisk and a griffin. But honestly, to me, the one on the right looks a bit like a winged dachshund. Definitely visit Hale's Church if you have the opportunity. The door is open, come on in. But first pause to read these two good-natured poems on the front door, the Ode to Boots and the Ode to Door. Basically, remove your muddy boots and keep the door shut. The church is a small, humble, but really fascinating little church that I'm glad I visited when we came to see the Abbey Ruin. Hales Abbey was founded as a Cistercian Abbey in 1246. The unique story behind its formation is that Richard, Earl of Cornwall, the younger brother of King Henry III, survived a shipwreck and showed his thanks to God by donating the manor of Hales to the Cistercian order to create an abbey. When the abbey was consecrated in 1277, the ceremony was attended by the king, queen, and 15 bishops. Hales became a very wealthy abbey through the dubious claim that they owned a prized religious relic, an actual file of Christ's blood from the crucifixion. This relic was debunked as a fake in 1536, and the abbey was dissolved in 1539. What remains of the original abbey is a few cloister arches, walls, borders, a Cistercian drain, and some rather interesting history. Near to the abbey and church is Hale's Pick Your Own Fruit Farm. It's a perfect place for picking strawberries in season, and they also have a wonderful farm shop and tea room. I featured the farm shop in detail in my farm shop video this summer, which I will link in the description below, so please check that out if you haven't watched it already. Not far from Hale's Abbey is this Neolithic burial mound called Bellis Knapp. Bellis Knapp is a Neolithic long barrow, which to translate into terms I understand means it is a burial ground with chambers where human remains were interred over 5,000 years ago. The hike up to Bellisnap from the car park is not long, but it is a bit steep and full of sheep. The benefit from that brisk walk is that you reach a fabulous lookout for viewing the surrounding rolling hills of the Cotswolds countryside. This worthwhile stop is also along the famous Cotswolds Way National Trail, if you fancy a longer hike that incorporates a visit. The first thing you see when you approach this chambered long barrow is this doorway. It is what's known as a false entrance that was created with dry stone walling and limestone to look like an entrance, but not actually offer passage to any of the burial chambers. At least not for humans anyway, perhaps for spirits. This long barrow has a footprint of nearly 180 by 60 feet, and it's 14 feet high. Within it are four burial chambers. It was discovered and excavated in the 1860s when human and animal skeletal remains were found, along with Stone Age tools and pottery. A century later, in 1963, over 30 more skeletons were discovered. This fascinating site gives a glimpse into the life of the Cotswolds area, 3700 BC. Standing atop the Bella Snap burial mound, you get a great view all around the Cotswold area in this direction. This entrance is not sealed, so you can walk inside and imagine life and death over 5,000 years ago. Hey Ian, have you ever just uh, sat around and chilled inside a burial chamber before? Can't say I haven't. No, same here. Yes, we've seen loads of houses, manor houses, and shops, and hotels built out of Cotswold stone, but now we've seen an ancient burial chamber. 
So that's the ceiling and in just uh, made a good point. Yeah, I'm not too comfortable in here because I don't know how this is supported. It doesn't, it's not an arch or something that you would <laughs> expect. Yeah, so you can feel a little claustrophobic in here, especially if you've lived somewhere where there's earthquakes. <laughs> okay, this entrance looks darker and scarier. Let's explore it. It's also pretty small, but it doesn't have nice seats like the other one does. But it does have huge stones in it. Huge Neolithic stones. This ceiling is a modern addition added about 100 years ago, and it's actually stones set in concrete. Originally, there would have been a huge slab of stone that would have been the ceiling for this chamber. And this fourth burial chamber is too small. I don't even think I could crawl into that one. The walk here is very shady with a view of lots of mossy stones and ferns in the woodland as you walk back to the car park. I hope you enjoyed our tour of Winchcombe, Hales Abbey and Church, and Bella Snap. Please don't miss our visit to Sudley Castle in the next video. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.